Happy Monday. Quick disclaimer, I am personally a fan of all of these watches. None of these brands have paid to be featured, although I might have to tell John that I lost the retrograph. Boom, watch fam. What is up, watch fam? I am Anna, and today I'm reviewing three micro brand watches at different price points. One is under 500, and then 750, and then 1,000. First off, a micro brand is another term for an independent watch company. The term micro brand typically refers to a company that is smaller, has a more limited selection of options, and usually a company that produces no more than a couple thousand watches a year. Today's watches are from Brew, Yema, and Autodromo. The first watch we're gonna talk about is from Brew. I am a huge fan of Brew watches, but even more than I respect the watches themselves, I respect the founder of this company, Jonathan Ferrer. John is also based in New Jersey, and because of that, I've had the opportunity to hang out with him a couple times. He is a gentleman and genuinely passionate about watches and making a meaningful contribution to the watch world. His watches are designed around the idea of coffee and espresso makers. I really like how he wrote about this inspiration on his website, so I'm just gonna read it. The brand philosophy is simple. The break is less about the consumption of coffee and more about savoring, savoring that very moment in time. The watches express their own industrial nature with unique vented aesthetics seen on the sides, case back, and crown. Each brew watch is made of stainless steel, is hand polished and brushed, and goes through extensive testing and quality control. Before we get into the watch itself, I need to address something very serious, and that is this packaging. You can tell that John went to design school before you open the watch because this is so clean and so nice and just, I mean, I'm sad that I'm gonna ruin this little, I can't, and I ripped it, I ripped it. Yeah, ooh, yes. Ooh. Oh, and it's a, oh, oh my, oh. and then, ooh, hot. Damn, John, this, this is the way that this watch should be packaged. <laughs> this is correct. This is the Brew Retrograph Technicolor. It retails for 350 and here are the specs. Even after just five years of watchmaking, Brew has a distinct design that is noticeable whenever you see it in the wild. It's very retro, it's well proportioned all around. We have these rectangular subdials with a matching rectangular, almost cushion-like case. And this example specifically shows how well John can play with color. On the dial, you have red, two blues, yellow, seafoam green, white, and silver. Yet it's focused and clean. The watch features a chronograph function with seconds timed with the center seconds hand, a 60 minute counter on the left, and a 24 hour counter on the right with a date at the six o'clock. The style also has a very unique feature, which is also probably unique to the Brew brand, which is that in between the 30 and 35 second mark, you have yellow hash marks. And this time period, the 25 to 35 second range is the ideal espresso shot time. For everyone looking for things to time, this is something that's really unique because it's very niche, it's obviously exactly in line with the brand, and it's something that people normally do every day. Very thoughtful touch. The movement is a Seiko VK64 hybrid that gives you a sweep second hand and an instant reset chronograph. The case is 41.5 millimeters, which actually shocked me because I put it on before I read the specs, even though they are on the package, which I already admitted that I had examined. Shut up. I have a six and a half inch wrist, so I'm shocked by how well this 41 and a half millimeter watch is really hugging my wrist and fitting really comfortably. I think it has something to do with the fact that the lugs are, well, they're, they're almost non-existent, and because the strap is sort of inclined down, It's vintage inspired, playful, smart, versatile. Great job, John. I am a huge fan of this watch. Our next watch is from Yema. Fun packaging. I like that. Yema was launched in 1948 in France. Yema really gained its credibility in the 1960s by creating watches that were considered to be top of the line in quality and toughness. Because of this, Yema dominated French watch exports in the 1960s. Throughout the years, Yemas have donned the wrists of Formula One drivers, astronauts, explorers, and divers. This watch is the Yema Navy Graph. It comes in at $749, and here are its specs. 
This is a reinvention of their 1970s Navy Graph, which originated as an enthusiast's dive watch. The 39 millimeter case is now water resistant up to 300 meters, an increase of its original 200. It features a screw down crown and the crystal and bezel insert are sapphire, which adds to its durability. This watch has actual diving chops. Its dial features are strong and heavily influenced by the 70s design. It has exclamation markers, a known trait of the Navy Graph, and bright yellow hands, which contrast sharply against its matte black background. The website says that the markers are vintage orange colored, so I'm not sure if that means that it's trying to be Fotina. The color seems too dark, too intentional to be Fotina, usually Fotina is a little more subtle. Either way, it's a nice balance of modern and vintage inspiration. I like that the lugs are relatively thin for a diver and sharp. These lugs paired with the thin dark bezel make for an excellently proportioned watch. It features an in-house Yema movement, which is an impressive touch. It's a 31 joule automatic movement with quick set date, hacking seconds, a frequency of 28,800 beats per hour and 45 hours of power reserve which is adjusted to plus or minus six to 12 seconds a day. We've got this watch on a rubber strap, which I think fits the model very well. It does have a bracelet option, which I also like. And if you have a much larger wrist than I do and you're looking to bulk it up, I'm sure that's where the bracelet will come in really handy. Our third watch is from Autodromo. Autodromo was founded by Bradley Price, an industrial designer looking to express the spirit of motoring. Its products draw aesthetic inspiration from a golden age of motoring when driving required style, panache, and perhaps a little bit of danger. This watch was inspired specifically by the Group B era of rally cars, which were produced from 1982 to 1986 before they were considered to be too dangerous to produce anymore. On its website, Autodroma characterizes the Group B era as the last romantic era of motorsport. Group B rally cars were produced in a time where the regulations were extremely loose. So these cars were extremely powerful. They were bare bones function. Badass cars with a ton of personality. First of all, the packaging is very interesting. It looks like a time capsule, which is appropriate. Nice. The watch is the Autodromo Group B Safari, which retails at 975 and here are the specs. The Group B Safari is the only currently available model from the Group B series, and it's a great example of why I think Autodromo holds its own in the micro brand space. I like that when designing a racing watch, Autodromo looked at the cars themselves and how they were built, how they were designed to influence the watch design. Looking at the design, the first thing that comes to mind is the dashboard of one of these Group B cars. Check this out. You've got the high contrast minute track, which mimics the registers on the dashboard. Much like the Group B cars, they've cased their design and the movement in lightweight materials. In this case, it's titanium. It's a minimalist design with retro vibes. Retro vibes. And I like this as opposed to making a watch that's say a chronograph, which could be more appropriate as like a racing watch. I like that they just took the cars themselves as the inspiration. Its hour markers are slightly raised. Its hands are all different. The hour outlined, the minute filled white, and the second with a bright orange end. And I think the slight orange accents pair really nicely with the frankly gorgeous green they've made this watch. The watch is 39 millimeters, which is probably the most underrated diameter size in my opinion. It's nine millimeters in thickness pairs really nicely with this vintage looking bracelet. This watch looks and feels like it's from a more conservative era of watchmaking, which was around the same time that the Group B cars were being made. The weight of the watch and the style of the bracelet feel incredible on wrist. It also helps that the watch's lugs are downturned about 45 degrees. The only downside to having these downturned lugs is that you wouldn't be able to have a thick strap if that's your preference. All in all, it's an incredibly original design. It fits well and I love this green. All right, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out all three of these brands. They will be in the description below and uh, subscribe. And if you like this video and wanna see more like it, hit the like button and comment down below if you have any suggestions of other brands to review. See you next Monday. None a la la. Page three. I have five pages of script today. That's the most script I've had. Woo. Watch is the Yama Yacht. Nope, not that. This watch is the Yema, no it's not. 70s Navy Graph, which originated, nope. Navy Graph, which originated, oh my God. <laughs> originated. Autodromo, Autodromo. Auto.